Welcome to Mikun's Hardware. In this video I'm going to take a look at yet another cheap Chinese SATA 3.0 SSD. This time it's King Dian S370 256GB. Let's start with my usual testing of Crystal Disk Mark with 4 different configuration. With 100% free capacity, 80% free capacity, 50% free capacity and 20% free capacity on the SSD. As you can see from the screenshot of Crystal Disk Info, the SSD has arrived to me completely new, it was only powered on 3 times and has 0 working hours. All 4 Crystal Disk marks provide very consistent read results and it does not matter how much free space is left on the SSD. The write speed is slowly degrading. The biggest jump is from 100% free capacity to 80% free capacity. And then it stays approximately the same. It's not a big deal, but it's an indication that this SSD is using some kind of cache and it benefits if it has more free capacity on the SSD for faster writes. As SSD benchmark is demonstrating similar results. Read benchmarks are very consistent no matter how much free space is left on the SSD. Write speed is also degrading with the less free capacity. Although in the S SSD benchmark, write speed is fluctuating back and forth between these four configurations. A bit more bitter side is the read latency. The read latency of the SSD is going from 43 microseconds to 131 microseconds with less and less free SSD capacity. This means that read access time to the SSD is going to increase if you write more and more data to the SSD. Nevertheless, as SSD score for this SSD with 100% free capacity and 20% free capacity is roughly the same, around 1100, which is a very consistent result and a positive factor. Torturing King Dian as 370 256GB with consequent 5TB write did not reveal any problems either. This SSD was able to write 5TB in just around 12 or 14 hours which is the best result across all the tested SSDs. Just to remind, I have tested Wei Tinto, which took around 24 hours to write 5TB, and Fujitsu, which took around 72 hours. Thus, King Dian provides here the best result. The SSD was also having very good latency times during the torture period, and its performance was not degrading to the end of the torture time. The SSD was behaving as good at the end of the torture as at the beginning of the torture. Now let's look at the results after 5TB of data was reading to the SSD. On the screenshot you can see the total writes happened to be almost 6TB of data. Unfortunately this SSD does not specify the NAND writes. Crystal disk mark results are still very consistent across the board and very similar to the results which were received before writing 5TB to the SSD. Read performance is almost identical with 4 configuration, 180, 50 and 20% free capacity, while the read speed is the best with 100% free capacity, and then it degrades and stays at the same level for 80, 50 and 20% free capacity. As SSD benchmark is yet again confirming the same thing. This SSD is very consistent and even after writing 5TB onto the SSD, this benchmark provides still very similar results and very consistent between the benchmarks. Once again we see that read latency and write performance is degrading with less and less free capacity available on the SSD. Overall SSD score is still staying around 1100 points in the SSD benchmark. Now let's compare King D and S370 Crystal Disk Mark results with the Samsung EVO 862 terabyte as well as two other cheap Chinese SSDs, Wei Tinghu WS256 and Fujitsu F500S. King Dian is losing significantly in the sequential write performance to all of the SSDs, having just 319 megabytes per second. Samsung SSD is providing 531 megabytes per second, Wei Tinghu and Fujitsu around 470 megabytes per second. What's important is that sequential read does not suffer the same performance penalty. What's even more important is that random read is not suffering the penalty at all. Here we see that random read with 349 megabytes per second is defeating Wei Tinto with its 240 megabytes per second and Fujitsu with its just 119 megabytes per second. King Dian S370 is providing result very comparable to Samsung Evo's 396 megabytes per second. Random write is also not that bad. 
280 megabytes per second, which is better than Fujitsu's 230 megabytes per second, and slightly shy of Waiting Tor with 307 megabytes per second. Random read and write with queue depth of 1 and just single thread is also on the level. As SSD benchmark results are once again confirming that KingDean S370 is a very compelling option. As we've seen before, write performance is slightly worse than Samsung Drive as well as Waiting Tor Drive. In SSSD benchmark we have 341 megabytes per second, while Samsung is delivering almost 500 megabytes per second. It's kinda a big difference, but not that important difference, if you keep in mind that SSD is mostly gonna be used to read data, not to write data. And read performance is very good on this SSD. Random read with 64 threads is providing 362 megabytes per second, which is way much more than waiting tour with 164 megabytes per second and just 60 megabytes per second for the pathetic Fujitsu F500S. In fact, Samsung Evo is providing just 10 megabytes per second more with 372 megabytes per second. Random write with the 64 threads is also better than Waiting Ho and Fujitsu, with Fujitsu having just 139 megabytes per second, Waiting Ho 260 megabytes per second, King Dian is pulling slightly ahead with 276 megabytes per second, while Samsung Drive delivers 348 megabytes per second. King Dian S370 provides very good read access time with just 84 microseconds. Samsung Evo takes the second place with 97 microseconds, waiting for 105 microseconds, and Fujitsu is taking this last place once again, having 125 microseconds. On the other hand, read access time is not that good, but also not that bad as Fujitsu F500S. 198 microseconds is slightly worse than 167 microseconds of waiting tour, and significantly worse than 39 microseconds of the Samsung Drive. But as we have already seen, write performance is not the strong side of this SSD. King Dean S370 excels in read performance, which is a very important subject of the SSD, and I would say it's way much more important than write performance. Now it's time to draw some kind of a conclusion. Among the three tested Chinese SSDs, I like King Dian the most. It does not have any performance problems, its performance does not degrade, it does not care how much data has been written on the SSD, it almost does not care how much free space is available on the SSD, it costs just 26 euros, it has a nice packaging. On the con side we have not the best write latency and not the best write performance. Still, I think write performance is on a very decent level and average user will not notice any difference. If you are not planning to write some kind of a very write intensive workloads on this SSD, I would definitely recommend this SSD. Nevertheless, I have to warn you that buying from AliExpress is like buying a cat in a bag. In my case, King DNS 370 provides exceptional results for its money and I really like this SSD and probably I will keep it for myself. In your case, you may receive SSD which is packaged exactly the same, it has exactly the same name, but it behaves differently. Thus, my results are only applicable for this particular sample and can be used as a reference only. I cannot give this SSD 9 out of 10 because its write performance is not as good as I would hope for, but I also think that 8 out of 10 is a bit too little for this SSD. Thus, I give it 8.5 out of 10. I bought it from AliExpress and the link where I bought it from you can find in the video description. Regarding the alternatives, I'm still planning to test Long Disk, LV Cards, King's Pack and Golden Fear. Waiting Hoa has already been tested, it's a decent SSD, review you can find in the video description as well. Fujitsu F500S I do not recommend to buy. And it appears to be that Fujitsu is the same SSD as Maxun, thus I do not recommend to buy Maxun SSDs either. That's all I have for you for today. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.